Uh, please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through an audio recording, which will be used to ensure an accurate record of proceedings produced in the minutes of the meeting. All comments made in open session will be recorded. All right. So, Mr. Dutson, you're up first. All right. I own the property at 37 Mattachison Street, which is between Dan Smith's and Bridgewater Savings Bank. And it's family owned and it needs to, we need to do something with it at this point. It's going to go on the market, more than likely. Um, so I'm just kind of trying to figure out what can be done, what can't be done. A big issue is when the 300 foot line came in. Mm -hmm. um, when we discussed that, you know, I kind of asked that some of us be grandfathered in because I think the part of the reason for that, I think Becky said, was so that lots couldn't be, you know, added on. Somebody couldn't buy and back and be add on and keep going deeper and deeper. Well, we've got the cemetery behind us, so there's no there's no land to add to it. So there's a couple of things that I've had in mind. One is Merrill did a plan for us that maxed out the usage of that lot. This was before the 300 foot thing. And what he proposed was basically a strip mall, you know, a small strip mall in front that would back up to Smith's property. Mm -hmm. And then a two-story office building in back. Uh -huh. Now, this lot's 600 feet deep. So the 300-foot thing cuts us in half, which would eliminate this. Right. All right. This isn't really what I want to do. What I'd rather do is buy my siblings out keep the house and renovate it, and put a building up down and back that would be probably a little further back than Smith's building that would be over here. Mm -hmm. But it's a 300 foot ton, and whether or not I can be grandfathered in and that not apply. Where, where is the 300 foot line now? Well, I'm just looking, I'm just roughly, I mean, this is a 600 foot lot, okay, so yeah, right about here, right halfway. Here, yeah. Okay. And the bank is over here, all of their land, that's not usable, never will be. It's wet for one thing, there's easements on, town has an easement on it. And then Dan Smith's property is on this side. Right. It wouldn't be seen from the road because this all, I should. Let's go. So the house is up here close to the road. So if the building were towards the back here, nobody's going to see it. So how would you have egress to that? There's a driveway that comes in here. Okay. How wide is the um how, how wide is the lot? The lot's uh, 182 feet. Um, what's the requirement for commercial is 200? Oh, I think what I thought was 150. Or is it 150? Yeah, it was 150. It's this, in the Center Production District, I think it's 150. I think I wrote it's yeah. 152. <clears throat> So right. you have 180 there? We've got 180. Yeah. 182. Where where is Dan Smith building roughly? All right. Is, Dan is Smith it, is building the wall? is roughly right in here. And what's this? What's over That's the here? bank. The bank. The bank is up here, yeah, and that's... all this land behind the bank is vacant. Okay. All right, and then this okay. is the cemetery yeah, back right. here. I know the cemetery. Yeah. So it just seems to me. It's 150. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for both residential and yeah. commercial, I guess. I mean, it seems to me that a lot of people in town would much rather see this old house stay here than it be torn down 
and put in a strip mall or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it can be done. If I knew that I could do something back here, then I would proceed to, you know, try to bribe buy my siblings out. Now, is that something that comes from us, or is that come from zoning? Uh, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Um, if you, can you variance that that 300 foot? I don't, I don't know if you can do that, um, because otherwise it's residence A, correct? Yeah, I think beyond, I, beyond the 300 feet. Yeah, it's residence A. I mean, I suppose you could always get a use variance to maybe to accomplish the same thing. I mean, I guess anything in the, I suppose anything can be variance in a sense. Um, it seems like the, the multiple driveways could be an issue. That could be an issue too, yeah. yeah. Um, and the setbacks. Well you, wouldn't have, well, you wouldn't have a problem with the setback of a building there. You've got plenty of room. But for the driveways, <clears throat> there may be some setback limitations. Setback from the, the sideline the side line yeah. here. What, what size building are you proposing to put in? It would probably be about the same size as Dan, probably, probably a 6,000, probably 60 by 100, something like that. Okay. Uh, Part of which I would use for my own, just yeah. how, stuff that how, I have. How but. wide is the rod at that point? The, the lot here is, uh, oh, it's got to be, I think it's one. You got 103, 103 and, and 51. So it's, it's so basically 150. Yeah. Uh, and what's the what's the side yard? Uh, 20 feet. Okay. So yeah, it's plenty of room. Yeah, okay. yeah. And you, you'd have to have you'd have to come up with a, with a roadway, and I don't, I don't know how you do that. You have the driveway to come in here, and you can't have multiple. Well, then you're going to have some. You, you need some parking yeah. for a building. Uh, and it'll. Well, what the parking requirements are, um, well, dictated by square footage, right? But what what's the use? Yeah, the use would be just probably. No, I mean the use of the building. What would the use office be? Office space. Yeah. No, it wouldn't be office. This is this is going to be basically storage. Be basically four or five bays that may be rented out. I see. For like landscape supplies, things like that. Yeah, I mean anybody that's. I mean you know how people are. Looking That'd to like a, rent like a, a bay for like a self storage, right? No. Well, you, no. you're not really self storage. I mean, they like contractors' bays, right? Yeah, right. Hmm. So you're not looking to do an office building or anything like that, or retail use? No, no. That's why the traffic would be minimal going in there. Hmm. Min absolute minimal. Who are you dealing with over at Merrill? Excuse me? Who are you dealing with at Merrill? Uh, Bob was the one that we were dealing with when he blew this up. Bob? You were dealing with Bob? He might help you. <laughs> he what? Right help you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, he was the, he was the one that I talked with. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I, I like Bob. Don't misunderstand me. Uh, and this was. Well, well, so here, here comes one of his people. This is probably three or four years ago. Um, I'm not sure that's still out of use. No, you were. You were actually across from Johnson Farms, which is a road. So you could, I guess you could put a subdivision road in there. Opposite. But Make, give I, yourself two lots, one residential, <clears throat> one commercial. Yeah, but he wants to preserve the house up front. Move it. I don't think that use that you described is an allowed use there. No, because it's in residential. You'd have to have. Right. But you could. You but if, even if, but even if you extended, if you said we'll extend the 
um, center protect protection district to the full depth of the lot. I'm not, I'm not sure that's allowed. Yeah, prob probably not. You mean the type of building or the use for the building? Yeah, so here's the um, center protection district uses allowed. <clears throat> All uses permitted in the residence district A, offices and clinics for medical, and psychiatric, and similar health services and their related laboratories for the examination and treatment of persons as outpatients, health, and fitness centers, businesses that provide financial, legal, insurance, real estate, educational, banking, technology, mortuary, travel, and vacation, consumer services or similar office uses and their ancillary services, retail stores for the sale of goods provided at any permitted outdoor display store to sell goods conducted no closer than 40 feet of the way line, municipal government, charitable, philanthropic, educational and religious organizations, six, automobile sales and display, automotive repair including automotive painting and body work and storage of automobiles for parts, recyclables and automobile washing facilities shall not qualify herein as either an allowed use or permitted use. And then seven, personal services. Um, and then with a special permit, uh, the special permit granting authority is this board, the planning board, uses allowed by special permit are restaurants, however food servers that solely provide drive-through food and beverage goods and or food servers that would primarily dispense food and or beverages without indoor seating facilities shall not qualify herein as either an allowed use or a permitted use drive-through operations, uh, outside display and sale of goods. So I think, I think, I don't think contractor bays would be an allowed use as the bylaw is written in the center protection district. You know, and that would require us to extend it, the, or a variance to extend it. Sure All right, so if it was just a building, if there were, if the contractor bays weren't in it, and Office it was for building. my use, just uh, <laughs> well, if you had a garage, a big garage for right. your house, right? But, but it would be in back. Uh, yeah, it's residence A. If you That's wanted, residence A. Yeah, if you wanted to build a garage for your own use. Yeah, I mean there may there may be some limits on. <clears throat> Accessory structure can be, I suppose. But I think it's up to four, for, the four or something like that. for your own so use. If you have four cars, like and that would be in residence A. We'd be fine with that, but not for a commercial use. Right. Right. Now your other plan was an interesting one, and that was to try to maximize the the use of the land, right? Right. This one maximized it. I just don't know if the demand is there for it. How many so acres is the, is the parcel? It's two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. Yeah. Mm. It's kind of a tough size because that's well, it's both it's too little, big and too small. Well, it's a little narrow. You know, we also, years ago, you know, argued over the um, Youth assisted living is having letting that be an allowed use. I know you were interested back then, right? With that, and that was another question coming up on that. Okay, on that, I believe it's five acres, five acre requirement. Yep, all right. And as I remember it, at the town meeting when they voted on that. The way it was written, it excluded the center of town. It, 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 yes, because it was specific to certain zones, and the center protection district was not included in the zones where it's allowed. That's correct. But <clears throat> so many people got up and spoke against it that I believe it was changed right at in town meeting and then voted on to allow it in to, the center to of allow it in the center of town. Well, I know it was. It's not listed in the zoning file as it's allowed in the sanitation district. So I don't think it was. Yeah, I think we may have voted that down or it didn't. No, that I, I can remember that specifically because I was so involved in it. I mean, at this point, so I many people think... spoke against it, saying the center of town is where it should be. And I mean, now that we've got the grocery two, store, but everything. Point, I know, but we had two. We had two meetings where where 
where it was discussed. I think in that meeting that you remember, we had very specific zones, residential commercial zone 53, bordered by Taylor Street to the south, north, do you remember, to, I forget, maybe it was Barker Street? Yeah, yeah. And it got voted down. There may have been a motion to add it to the Center Protection District at that point, but I know it was voted down because there were some folks on Taylor Street who didn't want it there. Um, and then we went back a second time and added it to a couple of other zones, and it went through. I don't even think we had any discussion on it at the time. We brought it up, you know, as a zoning bylaw change right. to the existing bylaws, and I think it went through. That, that's my that's my so, recollection. So I may not be accurate, but right. that's just just my recollection. Um, because I don't even think it's a if it's a specific topic. Yeah. Yeah, how is right, it I know. What is it I mean, we we kind of looked for it and it didn't. Yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna appear in the uses allowed in each individual district description. As, so, if and it's going. not in the center protection district. If there was a motion made to change it to include the center of town at that town meeting, and it was agreed to change it. Yeah, but, the, but I mean, I think at this point, what matters is what's in our zoning bylaws at present. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it does. If, that, if that's correct. That's correct. I, well, fight. I'm just trying to recollect how it happened. Right. I think what may have happened, and again, my my memory of it may not be accurate, mm -hmm. is that may have been an uh, amended motion on the floor that was handed in, but the motion did not prevail at that time. Why didn't it? It didn't. Pa mean, we went. We went twice with assisted living in front of town meeting. One as a very specific assisted living bylaw mm -hmm. that we would add to the zoning bylaws, yeah. where we had a very uh, specific delineated area where we would allow it. And at that meeting, it went down. It did not prevail. Then we went back and we added it to a couple of zones in town, right? I think it was Industrial B. We added it to Industrial B. Yeah, and we extended the industrial B zone actually over Cross Street, I believe, yeah. um, off of Church Street, which is where the Bridges by Epic is now. Okay. So we extended the industrial B zone, and then we added the allowed use of assisted living to that zone, and that's what passed at town meeting. So that passed. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> at that point, we had. You know, we, we skipped the discussion about center, we skipped the discussion about residence A, we skipped the discussion about the places where we saw it was not, it was not um, being a kind of popularly accepted at town meeting, but we knew with business industrial B that it would be more likely that we would prevail. So that did. But the people did want it in the center of town. I mean, that shouldn't have been bypassed. Well, what? That's, I mean, somebody I mean, should have said, wait a minute, this is what the town's people voted. But they, they didn't, they didn't, and it had to pass by a two-thirds vote at that meeting, and it didn't. But it did at the subsequent meeting. And that's not to say that we wouldn't consider allowing, having that being allowed use in the Center Protection District. I mean, I think we'd be open to discussing that. Mm -hmm. um, but the five acres is probably not going to change, right? Um, it could. It could. You what varies for that? I mean, but it's the seems, perfect place for assisted you know, living. Perfect place. Now, the other thing is, what about the land behind um, behind the bank? Is there a chance to get a piece of that carved off to well, add to the to, to what you have there? That's a possibility, and um, I haven't talked with the bank yet. But I think that when we put this on the market before, I believe the realtor talked to them. Okay. And they said that they would entertain it back <coughs> then. Now, whether they will now, I don't know why they would want it. It's right. useless to them. Right. Um, so I, I think that we actually we've got a, a subcommittee that's going to start working on some bylaw changes. Um, and I think that's one thing that we should take up because I, I think you're right. Um, I, I used to think differently, but I think that the, the center may be 
Um, it's not much. There's not much left in the center, really. No, there isn't. <laughs> so, uh, and that's that is a perfect spot for Sister River. It is. They can walk to everything. Right. That's yeah, that's right. and it's, to the cemetery. it's minimal that's, traffic. Right, we agree. You know. Um, yeah, I mean that could be an avenue to go down, and yep. you know, if if you think that you'd be well, receptive well, to it. Well, the other thing is we could. So this is where you may get into some sticky business, which is because we did talk a lot about it when we did the first uh, iteration was um, allowing it because it had the five acre minimum requirement. Right. Actually, allowing it in residence A. We did talk about it. Um, so that would take care of your 300 foot problem, too. Mm -hmm. so oh, wait, 300 foot depth. Oh, right. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that would solve that. Yeah. If it wasn't allowed use in residence A with a minimum of five acres. Um, and allowed see, use yeah. in the community, in the center protection okay, district, you and mean. you were yeah. able to carve out another couple of acres this way or something or get a variance for it or work it out. Right, um, right. You know, maybe it may be workable. It'd be easier just to go to the zoning board and see what they might grant. Mm -hmm. for, rather than trying to change the Change bylaws, the bylaw, yeah. You know, yeah. That's, <clears throat> yeah, we, I mean, we don't... I think it would be likely to grant it, like you said, there isn't that much land left. In True. Center, so it's and not it going to set a precedent where they're going to have yeah. 10 more people come in. I mean, we don't like to thing. encourage people to go to the ZBA because we like them to build things to the zoning requirements. But in a case like this where you've got an unusual piece of property with some restrictions put on it by zoning, you know, you may want to, you know, have an informal discussion with them. Okay. <clears throat> And then the site plan would come over here to us. Right, right. All right, well, that's a start. Yeah. I won't keep you. But well, thank you for coming and talking to us. It's, uh, well, it's like if we can all work together on it and get something in there instead of mm -hmm. a strip mall, you know, with subway in the center of town just doesn't. I don't know. <laughs> to me, it doesn't cut it. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what what happens from here. But thank you for your time. Well, thank you. Okay. Thanks. For <clears throat> and now my friend Linda is up. <laughs> my turn. Is that yours too? There. There it is. Do you want me to stay for support, Linda? Oh, sure. <laughs> well, good evening, everybody. How are you? Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Linda Hybertson, and I own a four-acre parcel on 44 Washington Street, down by... Right behind Mother Anna's, right? Yes, right Next behind Next to Protecto there. Wire. Correct. Um, I just want to give you a copy of... That area has always confused me, that it, the, the address of Washington Street is behind. It's behind, yeah. There we go. Thank you. This is uh, protected way here, right? Yes, uh, yes, it is. Yeah. So I've lived there for over 30 years now, and I know that I am grandfathered in, and I have a situation with my property. Um, what I'm looking for is for your advice and expertise on what you think the best use for my property is. I've had some discussions with Matthew. Um, and um, I'm open to suggestion. I, I'd love to be able to think about putting in a subdivision, but I know I have a frontage issue. Yeah, you got you got a big frontage issue. Well, yeah. well <laughs> right. But I'm understanding that um, a road width only needs to be 50 feet, and I have 42. And I was thinking of if I was able to get a variance for that, that might did allow you, I'm me. I'm sorry. Did you say what did you say road width? 50. Rick Rady. Yeah, I'm, I think maybe you, and I mean, he that, may have miscommunicated. I, mean, I, I did what? just recently ask him again. Oh, really? I did. I, I mean, that, for the, the front, I mean, the road width, the, the, the road width itself is 50, yes, but the, the frontage you need for sort of the road, well, so actually, I mean, yeah. yeah. He, he says that 50 more. feet. Yeah. You need a lot, yeah, but you need, you need a lot. roundings as well, so it's more like 110 feet. Yeah, he said the 50 feet is the width of the right-of-way for a street, not a frontage requirement, which right. I understand that. Right. 
Um, but he, this is what Rick says. He says, uh, you would need a waiver of the subdivision regulations for the lesser existing width. Um, I think that, that's, that's a big wait. That's a big waiver. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but from but 110 down to 42. Well, but you also have a frontage issue which would require a variance. At, well, the, at the very least. If it were a subdivision, I guess. Yeah, I guess you'd still. No, no. Yeah, subdivision requires frontage. Yeah, you have to have the 50 feet plus the, the 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 foot run. Yeah. I think a subdivision doesn't require 150 because it's, it's the lots, the new lots that are created are the ones that need the 150. I mean, it's right. sort of a technical yeah. one, but yeah. But still, you'd need, you need 110 unless you get a, a, a pretty big waiver. I mean, that's a huge. I mean, it's one thing if you've got like 107 or 103, but. Uh, so it's four acres? Yes. I have a very large lot, which has been great for my purpose and living there. I love my privacy, but. At this point, I'm I'm ready to see what the best use of the pro you know what can I what can I do here? I mean, I'd like to be able to subdivide and and move. Yeah. Um, if there's a way to make that happen, I'd be I'd be all on board. Well, you've got you're in business B. I've got a lot of stuff going through my property, <laughs> so I don't know what it. Yeah what it all means for me. Actually. Yeah, you're part of the historic district and you've got business B. And then in the back piece you've got residence A. Is it, is it your intent to keep the house? If I was to have a subdivision, I mean, they would just plow that under. Unfortunately, I mean, well, that, I mean, I'm fine with that. It's just, you, it's a small house. You I mean, would probably end up with maybe three lots. Well, that's what I was hoping. You know, that would be the maximum if we had it. You need an anchor for the lot, plus you're going to go on the road with the cul de sac. Right. Mm -hmm. You do. But with the 42 feet, I, um, I mean, that just doesn't seem feasible, really. Well, you know. I have so much land behind the scenes, you know, and yeah. that's the way I, I purchased the property, not knowing that I was in this landlocked situation yeah. 35 years ago. Yeah. Um, we also have to worry about getting fire equipment back there. I've had it. <laughs> I've had every truck in my driveway. <coughs> well, you know, I just want to learn. I want to know ahead of time, so I'm saying I've had every truck in my driveway. <laughs> it's a tough lot. It is, with all the zonings that go through it. And you've got commercial all in front of you, right? I have Mother Anna's in front of me. I have a Sella Corporation to the right of me. I have Borgasani's his strict yeah, building there. G Services and um, yeah, who just went in there? Somebody else just went in there. Oh, the um, the waterproofing guy. Oh, and what, the South, waterproofing yeah, guy? and yeah. South Shore Organics is over there. Yeah, and KJ's. Um, and Matthew Electric is across the street. Yep. So you're you're in a real commercial. Area. You so, do have all the business B uses allowed. Yeah. So I could under a site plan. Put up I, my. I could have a use of business there. Yeah. I, yeah I, absolutely. And what would I have? Does that mean I would be able to construct a new building? What are the requirements sure. for business B though for frontage. You need, a, you need a variance, I guess, for the frontage. You would, but, right? But you, well, you a, need two hundred feet, don't you? But you might be able to yeah. make a plausible We're argument because you frontage. already exist with this. With and you already have a driveway with this frontage, so you can make a plausible argument, maybe for a variance. That all you're doing is is kind of keeping that and just changing the use. And sense. Maybe that's a better argument than for subdivision. I don't mm -hmm. know. It's tight for the subdivision. Well, if there's a possibility, I would go further and I would engage in engineering yeah. expense to see if that could happen, but I'd like to hear it from you first. Well, even the business use is tough because, again, there's, there's no frontage on the way. That's a tough thing. Although you may want to, again, have an informal with the ZBA and see what they grant you for variances. Okay. Um, I think the ZBA doesn't do informal they only do hearings, but you could always talk to 
one of the sort of the employees down there maybe got a sense from the or I suppose you could formally propose it. <clears throat> what is the difference between like if I've seen private drives and we don't allow them anymore. Okay. Yeah. Because then the town it, That was before zoning. The town would the have port, to be it's called a pork a pork chop. Lot. That's what I have. Yeah, pork chop lot. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, so this happened before zoning. Well, that house that I live in is 1910, and the last, or actually the maps that I have were back to 1924. Yeah, they didn't have the frontage requirements back then. So there's there's no way to get around that <laughs> because it was grandfathered in. We can't go back to 1910. Yeah. No, it's grandfathered in as a residence. Yeah. It was disturbing. Which means if you wanted to build another single family house there, That's you'd where be I was fine. Going. Right, but I have to keep the same footprint. Is, or can I relocate that somewhere? Mm, you've got a lot of land so, there, plenty of land. That, that, I, I don't think you would have to keep the same footprint. I think you'd, I mean, I That's think. not what I heard. I think you'd still have to get a, I think you'd have to get a variance if you change the footprint, but. I think your chances would be very good because you'd have a very strong argument. I, mean, I think the CBA gives those variances pretty often, I believe. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, you usually, when we talk about keeping the same footprint, that's a building that's within a setback. Exactly. Like yeah. It's already it's already within the setbacks a certain way. So, so you're putting a, another house there doesn't make a lot any more non-conforming. Right. Exactly. That's kind of the test. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, I don't know. Unless the house is bigger, maybe, I don't know. So, so there, all right, so then there could be a possibility of selling the parcel and somebody could come in and build a new home. They don't have to, they don't have to be worried about sticking to like a thousand square foot. I don't think so. No. Nope. Hmm. Because your setbacks are fine. You got plenty of you got plenty of setback. Plenty of setback. <laughs> you, I mean, you got that great neighborhood back here. Chipettes. Yeah, yep. that's beautiful. They weren't there when I first moved in. <laughs> <laughs> you could look right down to the river, right? I've been surrounded. No, I can't actually. Yeah. You can't see that from my house. You got to walk down a few houses before you get there. But um, yeah, it was quiet back then. <laughs> uh, so I could probably. Looks like use it for business, put up a structure for business, perhaps. Uh, yeah. And I mean, also. Well, you don't have the frontage. You don't have the frontage for business. It needs 200 feet of frontage on a way. So then I can't. No. Okay. Well, I mean, it's you could ask for a variance for that. I mean, it's conceivable they might. I don't know. Maybe. But it's, it's a huge variance. Yeah. 200 down to 42. Yeah, that's it. <coughs> But considering that the driveway already exists, exists. maybe, I mean, it never hurts to ask us about that. Yeah, no, I'm, whatever information I can get. But it's true, it's, I mean, it is a huge, to go for 242 is a huge difference. And it's already being used as a, as a residential lot. Right. So that may be a better avenue. And again, for a subdivision, you just don't have the width there. No. But what about access through another way? I mean, what it would be, I don't have the plan for Borg Asani, he was over, he's over here somewhere. I mean, he's got, you know, that whole strip. Yeah. And his property abuts mine as well. And I was thinking, you know, whether I could purchase property to get in. Um, I mean, that would work if you combined your or property you, with one of these other properties that would give you enough frontage. Well, I thought that, but I mean, the properties in front don't give me what I need because they're already at their limit as far as trying to purchase property. I'd have to buy the whole parcel, like this person right here. Well, but, um, yeah, but, to, if you, but if you did, you could put a road in. Oh, I know that. For a sub, you put a subdivision road in easy. Absolutely. And you can subdivide, you can put in. Well, I'm aware of that, the but there's also a cash problem. And they may not want to move. Heck? They want money for that property. Yeah, they do. Really? <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe I should have bought it before they moved Oh, in, but, that, but isn't this a private home here? Yes, it is. Oh, okay, yeah. 
Yeah. And this is a control. and this is a private home yeah. too. Well, yes. Right. Okay. But yeah. I was thinking, you know, whether it be <coughs> through purchasing property through Borgesani because he has stuff, or getting at it from shipyards from these two properties because their frontage is, you know, if you could buy, if you could buy some from either the, either of these two properties. Um, I, I don't know. These are just. Yeah. Well, that would be unlikely. And then you may have a problem with the length of the road because you'd be putting a road in from there into here. Mm -hmm. Although, I don't think it's going to be too much further than what I have already, though. I'm going to see my neighbors through the woods and their driveways just like the length of mine. Yeah, but I think that's a tough ask. So, I mean, you do have some limitations here because of the, the shape of the lot and mm -hmm. the lack of frontage. And that's that's the real issue. Correct. Yeah. yeah, I'm aware of the frontage issue. I'm just trying to figure out what can we do. But knowing that I'm not limited to that footprint, that that's a relief. Yeah. So that could actually come down and something else could be a bill. I believe so, yeah. In the residence. No, no. in... <clears throat> Yeah. In well, any of this location? Yeah, because you, you could build a home. You got you got residence A, and you could build a house in business, business. B if you wanted to. Okay. Uh, um, so somebody could come in and buy that and put in something different. Yeah. Extra acreage. Four a acres, it's a lot. Yeah. Well, I was hoping I could use it for something. You know, I know that you guys have need... Um, it's affordable housing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'd like to help out with that. Okay. I'll talk to a developer. They may give you some ideas. Yeah, there are some who specialize in that. Some companies who specialize in that. Right, but I, I, it still comes down to the frontage issue, though. Does um, it? Maybe not. No? Not with 40B. Because the state would oversee or... Well, we'd have to talk to someone who may be interested in developing the property, selling it to someone who would be interested in developing it. But when you have an issue like that, you know, 40B is a way to get around some of the zoning issues. For affordable housing, right? I and mean, we don't want to encourage it. No. <clears throat> if we don't have to, but if you've got a piece of property that's non-conforming, and you want to develop it, <clears throat> that may be a way to do it. Okay. That had crossed my mind a few times. Uh, I don't know. Is there? I'm fresh out of questions. So <laughs> is there anything else that you can offer? No. And the room goes quiet. <laughs> well, okay. thank you. Thank you for coming in. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. <coughs> now, Bob, you need support. It's like I know everybody <laughs> here tonight, <laughs> and I don't know anybody in Pembroke anymore. <laughs> so next, we want to talk about the new updated map of town-owned land and open space parcels. Is that doing? Are you here for Bob? I guess that's what I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> we had talked a while back about the open, we can't call it open space plan, but it's a, the town has always had a map, uh, well, on the wall, right there. Town owned land, open space, parcels, and others. Only if you look at the date, that's, way out of dated and we feel that it should be updated. We had talked about it before in timely death and uh, now we'd like to at least get the ball rolling and I think you, Mr. The people at Merrill Engineering have handled it in the past, I believe, haven't you? Yes. So yeah. I think he probably knows more about it than, than I do. I look at it and uh, use it often, but when it gets to be a number of years out of date, uh, it's not always w good to rely on. Yeah. So many different parcels have changed in the, in the last five years. Well, back, back in actually in December, Brian 
Van Riper had dropped off a list of town owned parcels, and he said we'd get together and talk about it. And as we all know, we passed away. But um, and we talked about the fact of updating it. And one of my questions for Brian was, well, do you want it just, he had talked about it just being, let's see, um, town owned and town conservation. This shows a lot of different ones. Um, it shows City of Brockton, Commonwealth of Mass, Chapter 80, what, 61 Forest, 61. and so on and so forth. And so I think I had asked him, well, just, you know, let us know what you want to show on this map and we'll be happy to help you with it. it what it will involve in it is going through a list of new parcels, checking it against this map in conjunction with looking at the assessor's maps at the same time because I don't think we actually scanned in the assessor's maps. I think we scaled them in. I'm not sure, or I don't remember the process quite honestly. And then basically checking, adding new parcels that have been, you know, come on the tax rolls. That's what it would involve. Mm -hmm. Is there any way we could add that to like as a layer into Mass GIS? Into Mass GIS? Yeah. Uh, well, well, it's in CAD format, yeah. so it would be. Yeah, that can add it. It seems like there's an awful lot of existing information that we don't use. When you say master S, you mean the Oliver's? Oliver, yeah. yeah, yeah. It depends on if if mm -hmm. the if I'm not even sure they use AutoCAD format. I'm not sure what master S uses. I think they might be shape images mostly. shapes. I think the I mean from my point of view, having talked with Kathy Salmon about this, it, it's a the key thing I think is to take the opportunity to if you're going to go over sort of parcel by parcel and say okay this one is actually this and this. You know, to have some, Kathy or somebody over there be involved in those conversations so that then the assessors can update their records or correct any mistakes, you know, because they have for every parcel they've got some code that says what it is, what kind of land use it is. So that's a chance for them to then update those. And so then the map can be just taken directly from the assessor's data. And then if three years down the road you want to do a new map, all you do is just pull in the new assessor's data into your but map, so to speak. At the data that all the assessors data, I mean, that, I mean that's that's the data of record, right? So that's what you would have used for this map as well. Well, what I'm saying is the these the lines of these parcels may have been scaled and not actually I see. overlaid on the assessors maps. Okay. Um, I don't to trace the assessors maps if they weren't already in CAD would have been extremely time consuming. So they're in CAD now. I don't know. That's oh. what I'm saying. I don't know whether the this map is in CAD. Yeah, I don't but, know if but all it, of but the it may not be possible. But, but, but this map may not be scaled correctly it's, to it's, match. Yeah, I mean, but, but, it may but, not be perfect. But from a map perspective, how important is perfection? Well, that's that's <laughs> the question. How? What is the goal of the map? Right. Is it just to you know for somebody to look at the map and generally that's what a map is because anyone say all right I'm, I know that we have a parcel here you know off of um, Baker Street right and I know it's about halfway down I'm going to go to the assessor's map and find out where it is and then after you do that you really should go and look up the deed right. most people don't they just say oh it's 180 feet down on Baker Road yeah. you know on the left hand side um, unfortunately assessor's maps are notoriously bad just because they have always gone back to the old assessor's maps, you know, and someone says, oh, this line moved 10 feet, so they'll move it 10 feet, but it's not accurate. So the I same mean, mistakes that's are... why, I mean, a mortgage plot plan, if you look at it, it says based on assessor's records. Well, no surveyor is going to use a mortgage plot plan to do anything right? because they're just notoriously bad. So I guess that would be one of the questions. What is the goal of the map? So, Bob, what's, what yeah, do we care if it's 10 feet off? Yeah, I mean, is it just to give somebody an indication that the that, that well, sound has a couple of parcels? Right. I'm going to software that overlays on top of Google Earth that shows all the parcel lines and tell Yeah. And we have, yeah. you click on it, it says who owns it. Exactly. Yeah. That but that, that, that goes off, back but. to the assessor's map. Yeah. And those lines are basically, I suspect, have come from assessor's maps. Mm -hmm. I mean, Simplicity does it. There's companies that just do it. They'll overlay the assessor's map. Take a picture, 
use a couple of, you know, they'll like Route 53 will be one of the parameters, then they'll rotate it to get, you know, 139 in the right place and boom. Yeah, I mean, we've got the people GIS, which I assume is, it shows our assessor's data, and I assume it probably comes from the assessor's map. So, so uh, again, it goes back to what, how accurate you want this map. I don't. A any I wouldn't lay out a lot based on I know, this but map. any map like this is never going to be used to, to lay out a lot. Correct. Yeah, right. I mean, I think it's used for informational yeah. purposes yeah. only. I don't think correct. It and that's yeah, and that's yeah. is that what you that's, want? That's basically what we, yeah. what we use. So, at a glance, if you're in the in your office, you could take a look up there when someone comes in and say, "We got a good approximation of where this open space is." And, and what we're talking well, especially about, especially the, the way it's set up in town hall now, with all of the all of the offices downstairs, people are coming in all the time, and something like that makes our first step a lot easier. We can say, here, oh yeah, here, here it is, and this is what's around it. Now, what information do you need? Right. Yeah, it would be nice to have it in the GIS system because then you could say you can pull well, in the weapon line. Yeah. As long as you can soil, get at something, whatever other stuff. Yeah, you yeah, yeah but they're it, not. If it's changed, you can just print a new one a year. I mean. I think it makes so much more sense to to bring it in, and I know I think you have GIS at Merrill, right? You have you have the GIS software at Merrill. Not the GIS. We have AutoCAD. Okay, you don't have GIS. Well, we have we well, have AutoCAD GIS. Can dump to a GIS. Yeah, I mean we don't do the GIS mapping. We don't have like layers of utilities for a town or but whatever. Can you bring the data in to? A but we don't need that. We're we're talking about a wall map that people can refer to at a glance when I begin a discussion with you guys. And that's a very simple map. It's not a, com a complex map that needs utilities <coughs> and everything else on it. Right. And, you know, most of the people who come in aren't going to be digging deep into that. And the people who, who are, they're hiring to do it for them. Right? <laughs> well, I, I guess, yeah, that's right. And that, that's the, what they should be doing. Um, and when, when Brian and I had discussed this earlier, you know, back in December, he was like, well, we have too much information on this map. So, uh, again, I don't know. Well, let me just we add. We could have, but. Uh, well, why not just update that map? Well, that's what I, I was good. He was he wanted to update it to eliminate some of the, some of the owners, if you will. For example, he didn't he didn't think having the, the chapter sixty one land on there made sense. You can just turn it off. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. I I think we have, for example. <laughs> on, on PDF, no, right, where you can switch layers on exactly. and off. But doesn't the chapter so, so, but doesn't the chapter sixty one give you some sort of indication of what land may be available for purchase for open space? It could be at some point. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So they that's could, why I'm asking. I mean we could we could update this map based on well, whatever this list was Brian gave me, I think it was as of December of two thousand seventeen from the assessors. Of town okay, and let me ask Bob another question. So this this map has been useful to you. It's been very useful. Okay, so why don't we make it simple and and just update the map? Just update this map based yeah. on this list the list Brian gave me. Yeah. Give it to us in PDF format that we can switch the players on and off in well, PDF. You'd... Yeah, we don't have the issue with what we're. Well, what, 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 for what purpose? What, when, when is someone going to come in and want something turned off? I, I, to me, it's a very simple map. It's just letting people have a visual um, depiction of... A visual look of where they an are overview. and what's around them. And if you're going to go deeper, you're going to have to go to someone else to get the particulars. Right? So just update the map that we've got. So now I guess, I guess the question now that is... Where do we get the funds to? Uh, uh, that was going to be my question. <laughs> you know, how much is this going to cost, Peter? I do not know. That might be so get us a price. Well, now that I know, basically, it's it's really just taking a look at the list. I do have to see because this list, of course, refers to assessors' parcels. I have to see if we have the assessors' parcels on a background, if you will, of this map. <laughs> if we don't, then it would be more. But let me look at what we have knowing what the goal is, basically just a clear update of this map, and I can I can get the board a price. Okay. Now, I mean, I don't think it's a major effort. No. Because most of the, the tough stuff's been done, I think. Yep. Um, it just, and so I don't, I can't imagine there's been, I mean, I'm sure there's several good parcels, but I can't imagine it's over 20 or 30. Mm -mm. What do you think, Bob? 
it, well, some of the parcels have changed the tax. Parcels that have been taxed and taken over by the town, mm -hmm. a lot of them have gone into open space or something like that. So it might be. So the number they may have changed be, colors, if you will. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I guess the first step is for me to find out what we have, and then uh, you know, I can I can get the, the border price. I don't really anticipate it's going to be a lot of money, but like a large piece of land on West Elm Street. Yeah. Bob, I think. Yeah, right. That's right. not on there. Yeah, it's great street is swamp. Right. You know, right. Yeah. Bob, I think I think Rachel is telling me that they need you. Uh, they need you downstairs, unfortunately. <laughs> well, thank th yeah. thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, people. All right. One thing I was thinking of. Oh, well, after we get the new map, and I'm very positive about that, I think we ought to keep a notebook somewhere if anyone sees a, a mistake in the, in the map, so that the next time it will be easier yeah. to correct it back yeah. up again. No, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Thank you. Hopefully Thank you. there won't be any mistakes. But. Yeah. <coughs> well, if you do it, then there won't be any mistakes. But okay. I, I do, I mean, I do think that if, if there's a way, and maybe it can't be done, I don't know, but if there's a way to somehow bring in the assessors, I don't know if theirs is in JS only, maybe if it's in CAD too, but if there's a way to, to bring in the data from the yeah. shape files and the lines from the JS, that could be more efficient and it would allow... But this is not going to be a tool them. used for that, for the purposes of that accuracy. Well, theirs is not that accurate either. I mean, it wouldn't be about accuracy. It would just be to be, uh, to be accurate in terms of the land uses, to, to be say, to say, okay, this is... The assessors say that this one is Chapter 61. Yeah, but but, they say but that's goes. what you're going to look at, Peter, correct? Is if you have that backed up already? Yes. Okay. So accuracy-wise, we're saying if we're within 10 feet, we're good, right? Yeah. I, I would, you know, probably within 20 feet is fine, I would say. <laughs> I mean, this is just, So you know, we could pull yeah. it off a, a lot of existing resources rather than... Yeah, actually. I would think so. But I mean, yeah, it depends on more so long, I forget what we use uh, as a base. And, and again, yeah. these maps aren't going to be used for any official you know. Yeah, we can put it. Yeah, if you're going to develop land, land, you're going to get. Yeah, if you're going to develop land, land you're going to figure out where it is. You're going to get that. all yeah. the right stuff done. Yeah. You're not going to depend on a map on the wall in town hall. And ideally, I mean, maybe it's not possible, but ideally, if, if there are things where, where you know, the assessor says it's the assessor's data says the land is one kind of use, and Bob Clark says no, it's actually this. That could be a chance to to have Kathy correct her data. Correct. So um, is that why we had you here, Peter? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. You're talking about what we're supposed to be talking about. <laughs> well, well, while you're here, is there anything on your list, um, Matthew, that you had here that we may need to briefly ask Peter about? Um, I don't think so. There was the, there's some inspection reports, which I think are pretty routine. But there's they're pretty self-evident. His, yeah. his, uh, his uh, estimate of the... Sidewalk construction of Libby's Lane. I think that's about it. Right. We're expecting, we're hoping to get the drawing, the new drawings from Dominic's Way someday, someday soon. Um, um, yeah, I don't think so. Okay. On the bridges at Pembroke. They're going to come to see us on September 10th. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I mean, it's sort of tentative. I think. Probably. I don't know what. What's your, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I, I mean, think that I, I'm surprised it's taken this long. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what what, what the story is, but um, they say. I, I guess you've seen their re reply. I think it's groundwater. I think it's just higher than they had estimated. From the soil testing, which is possible in filled land, it's 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 difficult because it's all based on color right. of the soil, um, and it's not a it's not an infallible approach. So they could have made a mistake, and that's if they did, they did, and they um, they may have to relook at providing more storage in the basins or something. And he says that by September 10th, you know, he told me that they're going to have um, they'll have their engineers have prepared some determination of what the problem is and what they want to do about it and so forth. You know, my sense is maybe they may be trying to sort of avoid having to do too much. <coughs> uh, so, you know, they may, I don't know, we'll see what happens, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did, did, did anybody, did anybody oh, go? We have 
every resident up and down the street come in and talking about drainage and how high the groundwater was and yep. that was kind of like the only thing that needed to get right, the yeah. new right on that project was it's the big, drainage. It's a big thing there. <laughs> you know? Has anybody gone by there since the weekend? I, I go by it every day. I, I went by it and didn't even look at it. I'm sorry. Well, you know, the, the front face and well, now uh, it's so overgrown. It's now, it yeah, it's all, yeah, it's all overgrown, so yeah. you can't, you can't determine know. where the water surface is. Yeah. You know, it, it it's telling that, if, though, when you could see it, that the, you know, you could see water on the downstream side. You could see standing water. Yeah. Well, if the standing one on the downstream side, that's probably groundwater. And consequently, you wonder, well, that basin can't be two feet above groundwater. No. So. No. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. <coughs> I, I personally, I, they had wells in, and they said that the wells were, the elevations were coming up similar to the bottom. I mean, to what they determined groundwater. The first day I went out, I checked it, and they were right. But we were, I think, our April? Might have been the end of March or something. Because uh, this has been going on for a while. And and it was right on. I mean, it was right where they said it was. But um, I don't know what it's been doing lately. All right, good. We'll find out more on September 10th. Yeah. Right. So that's great. All set? All set. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Sorry to keep you to the spray. And, uh, oh, no. No problem. <laughs> Try to it is what it is. Take care. All See right. you guys later. All right. So, right. Thanks for so Matthew, we, we want to talk about the the Hoppenmuck Street screening again. Yeah, I guess it just it depends if Tom, if you have anything. No, new we've, to uh, from. we've put something together. Uh, basically, uh, it depends on what we want to do. Uh, I have put together a defense proposal, uh, and we had discussed the fact that we didn't want to do the plantings because they weren't going to do any screening yeah. and we talked about putting boats in front of the fence. All right, so that's it. So you were going to reach out to um, Mike. I did reach yes. out to Mike and the prices that I had from Mike were consistent. Uh, if you want, I'll bring something into the next meeting. Okay, and we can keep it under 25000 Oh, it depends well, what you do. All right. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, we just we can estimate it. Twenty four nine seventy five. Yeah, well, yeah. we can always put out something that we expect to come in at like say fifteen to twenty thousand, yeah. and then have additional okay. trees or additional yeah. levy right. feed of fence that we have the option of adding in. Yeah. Right, and it's just to block the field from the from the street. It's yeah. unfortunately. Can you see it from the high school football field? No, uh, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. Don't yeah. think so. There's mm -hmm. trees between between the solar field and the high school field. There's a lot of space between there, too. Yeah, there is an awful lot of space in those trees. And uh, so we're talking it's from the road, and it's from the, the people across the street as they come down their driveway and come out onto the street there. And so this would be, are we talking 150 foot fence? No, actually 100 feet of fence. 100 feet, yeah. Just okay. Uh, 100 feet of fence. Well, and, and we'll wait to hear back. We'll wait to hear yeah. back. So from I'm them and, on the next agenda, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, okay. I'll, uh, again, on the agenda again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, unless anybody objects. It's I a never-ending agenda exactly, yeah. item. That makes things easier. All right. Um, so, on your checklist here, the next uh, board meeting is August 27th. Two weeks. Okay. Uh, Matt would like to take vacation on September 17th through 21st and 17th through 19th. That's fine, I guess. Yeah. Got the vacation time, take it. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I just want to check if yeah. that's fine. Hey, you guys. Don't worry Basically about the, uh, an hour early on August 24th, you'll make it up. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, just for the two vacations, the one in September would be for the whole week, five days, and that would be for Michigan. Uh, and then uh, the one in October would be for a conference, that would be three days. Um, the only thing, I mean, it looks fine. I can't see any issues. Um, the only thing is that for the October uh, fall town meeting is is the following week, but I don't think that would be any. I mean, I'd be coming back on Sunday, probably. So I don't see that would be any problem. Um, is the conference related to anything that we do? 
Uh, well, it's the Urban History Association, so it's more related to my own sort of scholarship, I guess. Um, so I don't, um, I mean, it does kind of relate to planning in a roundabout way. You might have to take vacation days for that. Oh, yeah, I mean, I would be taking vacation days for all of this. You might have to. I might not have to? Yeah, I mean, if it's something related to what we do. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess I could check with, it seems like there might be a stretch. It's kind of like a continuous education. Kind of kind of of yeah, maybe, I don't know. All right, I so. But uh, anyway, I just, maybe I just want to check that those dates are up here with you guys. It sounds like it. Really, it sounds like, yeah. yeah. Um, we want to wait on the approval of the minutes for July 30th. I think we have to. Uh, but well, we don't we actually need a. Um, need a quorum. Oh, yeah, you guys can go. Ahead. We can go ahead and vote on it. Um, as long as everyone's read them. I read them, but I wasn't here, so. Yeah, that well, that may be a problem. We don't have a quorum That's present. That was my point. I know. And I mean, I'm just, I'm just, we we don't need to have a quorum of the people present at the meeting to vote the minutes. But you, you know, it's your first meeting, so figure we can wait. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Um, so we don't have anything, um, anything to put on the warrant for for town meeting because we have to have it in by the 17th. No. The only thing that we can we invite the is an article so for, uh, uh, for the new, new town map. I don't think we need an article for that. Which is basically okay. just we, it's that, something that, that all the, uh, We just we ask for the money to get it done and then once it's done Everybody they clean it, they file. clean up the cost for it at the at the That's fall town meeting, the following fall town meeting. Okay. Um, or wherever they, you know, clean up the bills. It, it's not going to add up to a lot of money. You say so. Oh, so uh, um, the Dominic's Way subdivision, a and he's he's given us the payment into the engineering review account, Matt. Yeah. So for Dominic's Way, um, it's strange because I finally did get him to give, put the payment into the account that we needed. And that's off um, of Gorham. That's the one off of Gorham. Exactly, yeah, Gorham. The, you know, that's the one that's, what, the three houses, I think, or the three lots. Oh, but he still hasn't submitted the um, the new drawings to, to Peter. I mean, yeah, I don't know if Terry hasn't done them yet, I guess. I don't know if there's a money issue or what it is. And so it's kind of bizarre. I mean, we can't keep on. I mean, I told him that you guys would. Uh, or that I assume you guys are willing to extend another 30 days. Uh, and so I asked him to put in a new request. But obviously we can't sort of keep doing this forever, especially it's kind of bizarre. No, um, so I mean, it's up to them. Yeah. Um, so I assume that, you know, in two weeks we'll, we'll get that thing and you guys can vote to extend it again. Um, it's just very strange that it's taken this long. Yep. Um, and at some point I just, I think we just have to say to him, like, you know, yeah, we can't keep extending this. Well, like, he, he's got to he's got to ask for the extension. That's yeah, and that's fine. But even even so, in like, writing. Yeah. Well, it's up to him. I mean, the ball's in his court. It's yeah. Up, you know, it's we're, just, it's we're just not even a, under any kind of compulsion to have to remind him. I mean, it's his. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's strange. What else is there? Okay. So uh, Lisa Sullivan and or Lori Muncy of OCPC will come to the next board meeting on August 27th to ask board to vote to approve the housing production plan they wrote up for Pembroke. So it would be good to have some questions or concerns about that draft housing production plan. Um, get those concerns to Matthew or to them so they can make you some changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, send it, I'll send it again tomorrow. Please. I want yeah. to be the first time for you. Uh, I mean, I think, I mean, if you don't have any concerns, that's that's wonderful as far as they're concerned. I think. Well, the one the one but the one do, the one the thing time. though is the um, inclusionary uh, uh, the drafting of an inclusionary zoning bylaw. Is that a? I mean, it, it's being recommended in the housing production plan. I mean, that's something we may want to talk a little bit more about. I mean, the housing production plan doesn't mean draft without. Zoning bylaws to go with it. Right? Well, that's, that's my point. That's where the rubber yeah. meets the road. Well, thing. that's my well, that's that's my point, which is, we, you don't. Here, here's the thing: you don't need to have an an inclusionary zoning bylaw passed before you adopt an HPP. So they so the, along with the selectmen jointly, we're we're approving this housing production plan, 
and in making recommendations to consider a inclusionary zoning bylaw. But I think we need more study on that. Well, yeah. We, well, we're not even close. I mean, we're not even, the bar right. is open right now. We don't have time for a hearing. We don't, we're right. not doing anything till spring. At the at the very earliest, correct. But I think as far as the HPP, I don't think I don't think that it um, I don't think that I don't think that pe approving it sort of forces the town to do it. No, it doesn't. It um, that, that was my point. But it's true, of course, that's what Jim is saying as well as of like just the HPP alone doesn't necessarily give us any progress. But it at least allows us to then the town to then possibly make progress based off of that. I guess. Yeah, so far, yeah, I, 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 I already signed on. Didn't. I didn't. <laughs> the, ado the adoption of the HPP helps you in other ways, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which, anyway. Anyway, we'll, my sense we'll, is that we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll, yeah. we'll get some more on that on the twenty seventh. My sense is that they're hoping they're really hoping to to get it. A, I mean, of course, it's up to you guys, but they're hoping to get it approved at that point so that they can then okay. sort of move on to the next step. Of the so process. I was under the. Uh, here's another thing, which is in your packets, which is the. Um, the variance being requested from the ZBA for the big LED sign along Route 3. Public hearing is August 20th. I thought that got turned down by them. Yeah, it did. So I'm not quite sure. I don't know if this is somehow different or I don't know what. You know, I think it might have been a special permit that they requested before. Is oh, that, okay. I mean, I could I, be it's just It's just I'm interesting. Sure. Yeah, it's, that surprised me too because, yeah, I know they got shut down before. It's an easy way to get the town uh, some money. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's what the Suckman would like, um, and I think that's what they thought the ZBA would be willing to grant. But uh. so then this thing near the bottom, um, it would probably come to us for a site plan, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't know for a large sign. Mm, I think so. I said it's a large sign, forty well, years. Sign permit, yeah. right? Huh? They need a sign permit. That's what they're they're trying to get here. But that comes before us, the sign, right? right? Yes, exactly. They're trying to get they're trying to get approval for the sign at all, and then they have to erect it. Yeah, and this would, I mean I guess this would be comparable to the one in, don't that one in Hanover that yeah. you see as you drive. Well, no, we didn't know. We only do signs in the center of protection, and the selectmen do signs. The, right. Have the selectmen already said no? I think they want it. Yeah, so why do they need to go to? Because the, it doesn't conform with their zoning. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, but yeah. <clears throat> um, and then this thing near the bottom. Well, um, oh, the, about the about the um, scanner. I, yeah. So basically, <laughs> um, they're talking about. <coughs> it's actually, I guess, the police department that's got some funds, and so I've been talking with Kathy Salmon and some other people about possibly getting like one of those large, you know, plotter printer scanners that can print like you know, 24 inch by 36 inch. Um, I guess a, a width of 24 inch and then the length of anything, and they can scan as well. Um, and so it would probably be a really useful thing for the town to have. Uh, so they were thinking about possibly going into this office. There's no room here for that. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, no, most, I mean, most of the time there's plenty of room, but during a board meeting, you know, I think you'd have to sort of push it out or something. I mean, there's not enough. We're not wheeling that thing into that Exactly, here. yeah. And also, the other thing is, like, I'm the only so I don't know here, if so you like, guys if you guys concur. I would say no. no I agree with you. I okay, think. so that's you know, that's if they, easy. If they said they were buying that 20 years ago, I'd be like, that's a wonderful idea. But I've got that stuff, and we don't use it anymore. We really? print everything out at 11 by 17, and most of our deliverables to a client get emailed yeah. through PDF. We're not oh, printing yeah. out 24, yeah. 36, rolling yeah. them up and that. putting them in a roll, so, and FedExing them. So I think our answer is no. I mean, the, the white form of scanning is good because if you have something that, that's big. Well, we have a lot of big you things. Know, that we you have no yeah, way to can, like, get it into a Well, computer we can, we can scan it scan. and get it down to 11 by 17. But, right. Um, so it would be, it would be we, we may have some use for it, but we don't have room for it. Yeah, and also, like. We don't have room for all of us in here with people. Yeah. yeah. So we, we can't. Also, it's, I mean, I'm, because I'm the only person here, like if I'm out, to, if I'm on lunch and the door's locked or if I'm on vacation, then they, they can't access it. Well, oh, but we're not here to take care yeah. of the, exactly. of the yeah. you know, I think the lack of sense. space in town hall. <laughs> I think it would make more sense in the office of the building department, perhaps, anyway, if they do it. I don't know. All I don't right. Know. But yeah. I, well, they probably they probably cramped, too. Yeah. I'm sure um, they feel that way. <laughs> all right. So we were also going to talk about possible changes to the zoning bylaws, but does anyone have any appetite for that tonight? Did you start with a list on that, Matt? 
I do have a list, uh, and I think it would be a great conversation to have, um, you know, once, and I've got it right here, the only thing is once we get started, you know, it, it's, it's probably going to be a, you know, probably won't be a five minute conversation. Well, we have, we, have a, we have a subcommittee of the board that we've appointed for that purpose, right? For the... Well, you guys discussed but, that. Yes. How, 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 well, so let, me, let, me, let, me, let me finish my, my thought. <laughs> Sorry. So we're thinking of forming that. I think we want to have a larger representation of the board to go through that list first. Yeah. And then we'll, you know, talk about a, a you know, a subcommittee for that. But I think a, a bigger group of people to talk about the list of possible mm -hmm. zoning bylaw changes would be better than the four of us sitting here tonight. Yeah. Fair enough. It is what. What's the thought? Either, Just either. formatting? What? Uh, no, there's a know. there's a number of things. Well, there's the, the housing production plan. We probably got. I mean, some inclusionary zoning. <coughs> fixed. I guess you could split that into two things. I mean, my thought is we we have the the uh, in law bylaw and then the accessory, and they they seem to be kind of like the same thing, and neither. You know what's the difference between them, and no one knows. But they, they seem to be they need well, cleaning what, up. They do, but and then I think the inclusionary zoning maybe it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, well, one on the in law versus the accessory apartment, you've got the affordability issue that separates the two. Right. So I mean, I'm we could discuss whether we want to we want to make that affordability requirement for an accessory apartment that's what I'm thinking versus it would be a good good way of doing it. You know, yeah. get something back. Right. So, so there's, a, there's a lot of different issues involved in some of those things. I mean, formatting and everything else, we wouldn't go after. We want to go after some meteor issues. Okay. <clears throat> and I and also what we spoke about tonight. You know, the center protection district and not having that. Uh, you know, assisted living isn't allowed use. We may want to look at some of the use allowances in some of these zones and update them for what's actually happening in the marketplace. Yeah, I think right now assisted living is. Only allowed in the two industrial zones. Industrial I B, I believe. Right. Yeah. I think it's in both. And then, like, I mean, if you, yeah, if you allowed assisted living in more zones, maybe if you allowed multifamily in a few more zones, perhaps. I don't well, know. I'd like I mean, to see things us being able to not have to deal with 40 Bs, but relax our rules. Well, on, tonight, to, this, to where we get this enough affordable units. Well, this screams 40 B. Yeah, it does. But um, we right now we don't allow it. But I like to see something where we would allow something to happen. Right now we allow nothing to happen. Well, and, I mean, <laughs> for, for for this, I, you know, this this landowner is kind of backed into a corner. Yeah. One of the only options, if she wanted to subdivide that property, is 40 B. Right. Or something that we write. That would allow that to be developed. But on the other side of that, it's not for but, it still but on the other side of that coin, there may be a lot of other parcels in town that have this situation where we would may, maybe looking at our overall zoning, say a 40B wouldn't be a bad idea there, mm -hmm. because of its location, and the and the uh, lower impact it may have. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking four units on that property would not be bad at all, or even more. And, no. But if we get a, some affordability in there, and we get to use our rules versus someone else's rules, right? R well, yeah, right. Good point. So I mean, what I don't like about the 40 B's is we had one. The other street it was the last three or four years, and under our rules, it couldn't go in as a subdivision because it was going to come out at an intersection. To me, that's a safety issue. But they came in with a 40 B and bang. Now we, we have a safety problem. Right. Which one is that? It was within 400 feet of an existing street. So, I mean, it's not necessarily the site distances, but the more time, more side streets you have coming in off a of main drag, well, the more cars that are turning, the more drivers get frustrated. You wind up with more, more accidents, even though there isn't that many cars going in and out of that development. Mm -hmm. So we've got, we've got lots of bylaw things we can talk about. Yeah, I've got a list of like, to, and if anybody wants to see it, I can show it to you, um, uh, or we can just wait till next time, or I can email it to you. But I made a list of about ten or twelve. Well, that may things. well that may be helpful to get the list ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you email it out to all of us? Yeah. Or actually, add them all onto the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, on the other hand, we could form a subcommittee right now 
with Becky, <laughs> with everybody who's not here. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> not here. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? You got it. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Oh, God, look at the time. <laughs> <laughs>